deal with death in the job that you have. You see people come in and see loved ones that are going to pass. And you bring comfort to them, is that right? And everyone that has mentioned your name that knows you outside of this church usually says one word that they all have in common. And that is what a loving spirit you have. Okay? Because let me tell you something. When you're at that stage in your life, you don't want people that have no empathy around you. You don't want people that are cruel around you. You want people that can love. That can just be there. Maybe not say anything, but their presence comforts you. Is that right? This is what your God will do for you all the days of your life. If you love Him. Now listen, God works in two ways. Not only is His Holy Spirit present inside of you to give you peace and hope, but God will send others to bring peace and comfort as well. This is why it is important for you to stay faithful to God because God still wants to use you. Now, how many of you have grown children? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Look around. Because it's a lot of people here. Okay? Now, how many of you have grown children that are still having given their hearts fully to Jesus Christ? Okay, raise your hands. Now, how many of you pray for those children on a regular basis? That's everybody, right? It's so funny when you see parents of newborns and they think this is the hardest thing they have ever done. And that babies are like, oh my goodness, it's got to get easier, right? And, and those of you who have raised your kids from babies to adulthood, you just look at them and laugh and you pat them on the shoulders and yeah, it'll get easier, don't worry. Uh, and you know what the answer is. is that it, There's going to come a day when you're going to wish for those days when they were children, when they were infants, when they were babies, and you controlled everything. What I found is that as your kids get older and when they become adults, they make their own decisions. That's when it really gets hard. And when you see them make decisions that hurt them and you and everyone around them, and you're wondering, how do I fix this? And you realize you can't fix this. The only thing you can do is pray to your God. Be a witness to them. Let them know that they are loved, they are cared for, that you're always there for them. You don't judge them, you don't approve what they're doing, but you're there for them. God does work, and God does answer prayers. God will protect the lives of your children, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes very bad things. Very bad things can happen. But God wants you to trust Him, to believe in Him, and to be there so that you can be used by Him to help them through that time. Amen. When God says, I promise to never leave you or forsake you, did He mean it? Amen. Even when your children are hurting, even when you're hurting, God is there. And God loves you, and God hears you, and God is continuously working for the salvation of your loved ones. Amen. The question is, can you die for your children and save them? No. no. If you could, would you? Yes. But you can't. So what is it that you can do? You can turn them over to the God that wants to save them. My biggest problem throughout my entire Christian walk has been to believe that God really actually will work in my behalf. I can see Him working in your behalf. That's because I don't know you the way I know me. <laughs> but I know me. And, and I know that God knows me even better than I know myself. 
Yeah. That's a scary thought. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But almost three decades of walking with him, what I've come to find out is that he knows me and he still loves me. Yeah. And there is nothing that I'm going to do that's going to change that love. Mm. Listen, I can walk away from him and it's not going to change his love for me. Yeah. He's going to accept my decision, but it's not going to change his love for me. He's going to want me to come back, but he's going to give me that choice. You understand? God doesn't love. God is love. There's a difference there. See, you can ask my wife, she'll tell you this. When, when I was younger, before I became a Christian, and when I first became a Christian, and I met her, <laughs> I met her before I was a Christian. And I was at a point in my life where I was right on the cusp of being an adult. And I was old enough age-wise, but mentally I wasn't there. And what I wanted so bad was to be there, but I didn't know how to get there. I had become a person that I hated. I couldn't stand to look at myself in the mirror. I didn't like to go to bed at night because I knew if I didn't wake up the next day where I would wake up at. Okay? That was my theology back then. I knew that God didn't love me because of what I did. I knew my mother wouldn't be proud of me. And I wanted to change, but I didn't know how. Now, I told you this before. I've said a sinner's prayer a dozen times. And it did absolutely nothing to change me. Because I was hoping that you said that prayer and you woke up the next day and poof! You were you were a different person. But you know, I said that prayer, woke up the next day, and I was the same person. And I hated that person. And I met my wife, and I saw her, and she was an adult, and she had the responsibilities of an adult. She lived her life as an adult, and I wanted to be like her. And I realized that she could help me be who I was. So see, when I first saw her, I saw her as a tool, because that's how I saw people. They were tools to be used to get what you wanted. And when my wife started to know me and know who I was, she told me, you are a shallow person. <laughs> that me. At first, I didn't know what she meant. Then I knew what she meant, and I didn't care, because it was true, and that's who I was. <laughs> but what I found is that through her, I got a glimpse of what unconditional love was. I saw it because she had it for her son. And I saw it because for some reason she loved me and she kept loving me and I mean, at times don't know why. But she did. But then I got to see her for who she was and I started to really love her. Because she is an amazing woman. And God uses her on a daily basis to talk to me and to help me to grow. And we've got to have children together, and we got to raise those kids, and we got to see the joy, and we got to experience the pain. And I was one of those parents that was hoping that this is going to get easier, right? <laughs> and you find out that no, it doesn't get easier. Tears and pain. I know it intimately. But I also know what it's like to have somebody stand by your side for rich or for poor, sickness and death, till death do you part. Nice and terror. You made that commitment to each other. Okay? We were once where you are now. If you understand what I'm talking about, you can get to be where we're at today. Love is not a feeling. Love is a commitment. Amen. Love is a decision that every day, even though I drive her crazy, <laughs> even though there are days when she may not like me, and I may not like her a whole lot, I'm committed to her. And 
I love her. Love is not a feeling. Love is a commitment. Love is no matter what this life throws at us, I'm here. And I will always be here until you breathe your last or I breathe my last. That, Max and Tara, is what love really is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is 625. You guys are going, is he going to bring this thing in for a landing? Or what? <laughs> Thank you.